Last year's Supreme Novices Hurdle hero, Marine Nacional, is set to make his chasing debut at Leopardstown's Christmas Festival. So we came along to meet his trainer, Barry Connell, to see how preparations are going. Barry, thanks so much for having us down here to this fantastic training establishment as we move into the depths of the National Hunt season. Firstly, on Marine Nacional, we've just seen him there this morning. How is he? Yeah, he's in great form. Um, he, um, he was on the go most of last season because he missed his, his, his proper winter season the year before. Um, so this year we gave him a proper summer break. He was out for about 10 weeks. Um, so he probably came in a little bit heavier um, and we've had to do a little bit, little bit more work with him um, to, to, get him to get him fit. He, he was ready to run in Navan. That was the original plan to run in Navan in a beginner's chase um, three weeks ago, but the ground came up heavy and we didn't want to give him a grueling race starting off. So um, plan B was to go to Leopardstown for beginners um, at Christmas, then go back for the Irish Oracle. So that's what we're going to do. And um, his schooling has, has gone really well. Um, we've taken him to the curler there and schooled him on grass. And we expected him to be good, and he is. Um, he's, he's very athletic. Michael schooled him there. He's delighted with him. Um, so I think he should be at least as good over a fence as he is over a hurl. Um, and um, he's, just, he's just come to hand now. Um, did a nice piece of work last week. and. We'll probably do our final piece um, this weekend um, with the other horses that are going to run at Christmas. I'm really missing Ali. He's a horse who, like you've all, I remember from way back, even in his, after his bumper, you've yeah. always thought an awful lot of him. Yeah, I never had a horse like him. Um, and people say, well, you know, you've had various other horses who've won grade one races, but he, he, he's just, um, he's incredible speed. Um, that's what sets him apart. I think he could be certainly a graded horse on the flat um, if we wanted to go down that route. Um, he's very athletic and he's a brilliant temperament. Um, when, you put, when you put all those three things together. Mm. Um, and I, I was probably given all kinds of hostages to fortune last year in terms of you know, saying how brilliant he was and how he wasn't going to get beat. Um, <laughs> And I, I think I said somebody before, the, the worst five minutes of my life was when I was standing down at the bottom of the chute when he cantered off down to the start. And I'm there on my own, I'm going, what <laughs> happens if this guy doesn't run well? Because um, you brought that pressure onto yourself. I did. You? I, know, I don't know why your, I did. I, I, I just, listen, um, just what we were seeing at home with him was so exciting. And, and every time, um, I suppose that time I was most nervous was when we went to Killarney for the second race. Right. Uh, it was an egg and spoon forerunner bumper in Killarney, the winner's bumper. But um, the, the manner of his win in Punchestown in, in a very hot race, um, he won like he joined in halfway. And you say to yourself, is that a flash in the pan, you know, or is this the real deal? And until it happens a second time, and we went down to Killarney, he won by the length of the straight. <laughs> he won by a furlong and the horse that John Rhines he beat came out, and, came out and won so he wasn't beating trees um, so like he, he's just such an exciting horse mm. um, and he's so unassuming you see him here and you'd walk by him like he, he's, he's not a real good looking typical national hunt stand for a horse he's he's kind of a, a tall lean athletic horse um, but he has an engine and he has the temperament to go with it. So that's hugely important because when you get to the big festivals, when you get to Dublin Race and Festival, when you get to Cheltenham, there's so many horses run the race and the parade ring beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's never going to be the case with him. Do you think he can be as good a chaser as he was? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, I, I, think he, I think his technique over a jump, I think he is, he is, is very good in what we've seen in his schooling so far. So I see no reason why he, he won't be as equally as effective over, over jumps. You went straight from the Royal Bond Hurdle to Cheltenham last season, and that yeah. seems to have always been the plan with it. Yeah, but it, it, it kind of, um, because we, we, we missed our previous winter season, 
um, he had a saw wither, believe it or not. And it sounds like something trivial, but um, rather than kind of putting pads on him, continuing to ride him out, we just left him alone um, and left it heal up himself. But we kind of missed most of the proper winter season. And he was fit and he was ready for a run. So we said, look, we'll run him on the bumper and punch it down. Um, and then um, he goes on good ground. So we said, look, we'll keep him on the go. Um, so we ran him back in Killarney. We gave him a little mini break then and brought him back for a maiden hurl in, in Punchestown in October. I October. Think. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the two day meeting in October there. And, and that was the reason which they didn't go very fast, but his jumping no, was, it was very good. No, it was an egg and spoon yeah. race and it was probably his least impressive win. Um, and then after that, um, like if you win a maiden hurl at that time of year, you know you're straight into a into in if you think you've a good horse you're straight into a grade one so the royal bond was the obvious place to go it was still a ballsy enough mood or move to go straight from the royal bond hurdle with a horse who was fairly inexperienced yeah he was um but you know normally novices going to Cheltenham will have had say three runs max usually so he was probably short a run one run going there um, but, but again we felt it was the right thing to do rather than uh, keep going with him was to freshen him up mm -hmm. and he's he's a light framed horse so he comes to hand again quick enough um, and I think if you go back and look at the stats I think like a butterfly was the last horse to win the Royal Bond and go, and, and go straight to Cheltenham and win so it hadn't been done in a long time. And as it turned out, it was four grade one winners come out of the Royal Bond yeah. last year. It looks like it was a very good renewal of it. You never know at the time. Um, you know, all the horses behind, four, three of them have, have won grade one. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the form, form looks rock solid. Um, and the form of the Supreme was Frank from Vasa Vega came out and won a punch down. So, um, and I think the time, I'm not a time buff, but somebody told me the time was comparable to the Constitution Hills um, Triumph Hurl. So it was a pretty true run race. There was no hiding places there. Um, but he's such a high cruising speed and then, then can quicken. Like he really quickened away from the back of the last mm -hmm. and one pulling up. And on the Supreme Novice Hurdle, like you must have got a massive kick out of that. Was that, was that as big a kick as you've got out of racing? Yeah, incredible. I mean, that's, that's the pinnacle, pinnacle. Like for a small little team here with 10, 10, 10 people working here, 25 horses in the yard, it's our own operation. We do our own thing to go there with a horse that, um, you know, had five runs, five wins, and we, we talked up probably foolishly, but um, anyway, that's... <laughs> but, but that must have added to it, the fact that you put yourself yeah, under so much pressure. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it did, it did, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it was hugely satisfying and, and a relief, a massive relief um, when, it, when it actually happened. And, you know, we're nine months later, are we nine months? Um, yeah. Um, still kind of hasn't dawned on me that, that it actually happened. Um, and, if, and if he never wins another race, mm. you know, I mean, it's been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm incredibly proud and um, my only regret would be um, my dad who introduced me to racing. Um, it would have been great if he was around, if he was still alive to, to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course that was your introduction to racing, wasn't it? Your dad used to bring you to Phoenix yeah, Park, it, it, like, like Yeah, everywhere. I dragged along <laughs> initially and then, then probably... Um, me dragging him, but um, yeah, I've been at every every every, every dog and pony show. Cheltenham's been a magic place for me. Um, I, I started going there as a student when I was in college with my pals, and we stayed in Stratford, got the bus over, went to Tully's Travel. Um, never thought I'd have a runner there, um, and then I was lucky enough to to ride to ride there. I rode two winners at the November meeting and rode in two champion bumpers. And I've had, f prior to um, Marine, 
lucky enough to have had three festival winners. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's magic. I mean, it's like when you go in the door there, the atmosphere is electric. And like to have a runner there is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. You know, um, so it's, you know, it's dream stuff. Is it a sense of sporting achievement? Or yeah, I, it, 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 it is. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's, you know, having had the horse from the start, um, seeing him progress through his career, and look, luckily enough, um, coming across Michael and having him as part of the journey uh, and the two of them progressing along um, and, and taking on all the big stables in Ireland and England in, in a marquee race. I mean, the Supreme Novices has always been first race to the festival, you get the festival roar. Um, and usually it takes a good horse to win that race, you know. Um, I never in my wildest dreams thought that I had a horse good enough to even run it. Mm. Just on Michael, like as you say, he's, he's kind of grown with you along with Marine Nacional. So he, he first came to you through Marine Nacional in his bumper at Punchestown, right? Yeah, he, wrote, he, he, he rang looking for the right. Um, I didn't have Finney, Finney Maguire rides for us now, so he, he rides all the bumper horse, but he wasn't working here at the time, so Michael just rang for the ride. He'd ridden once before and a point to point for me, um, and um, he gave him a super ride. Uh, I was very impressed, and I said, come in and ride out. Um, so he started coming in a couple of days and riding out, and the more we saw of him, the more we liked. Um, so we sat down one day, and I said, Michael, I think you should think about turning pro um, you have your university degree you were champion novice point to point ridery 300 point to point rides um, and I don't know how many winners he rode probably 40 50 point, point to point winners um, so he'd all, all that under his belt and he was 23 it wasn't like he was 16 or 17 um, and he could claim off 10 2 10 3 so I said, look, we'll back you here. You can ride everything here. Um, so um, he took the decision to, to turn pro and last season. Um, we both had a great season. Um, and we were lucky that we were probably getting a free seven, seven pounds or five pounds for most of the year. Um, and we put him up in, in all the graded races. Um, he won on grade three in Enniscarry and then he won the three grade ones where he couldn't claim. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that's ever been done before. Um, it's a bit unusual because normally seven pound claimer would be yanked off the horse and somebody else would be riding it. Um, but I just had confidence that the two of them were a great unit together. Um, and it worked out brilliant. Mm. And, and the team you have here, like we saw Gary Cotter, Roger Lochran earlier on, your yeah. son as well. And Finney as well, like you've as well as a, as a as a strong but select group of horses. It seems like you've assembled similarly with, with, in terms of humans. Yeah, I, it's 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 really important to have a good rider for every horse, um, and that's the reason why we we never want to get too big here, because um, it's all about having the the, the the continuity, having the riders that are on the horses from from an early stage right through, because they'll be able to tell you they they can tell you. If there's a little issue with them or what shape he's in, um, then they'll ride him the work as well. So you, you have all that continuity and, and it's, you're going nowhere without those guys all doing all the day-to-day -day stuff and ri riding, all, riding the work and telling you when, when they think it's ready to go, when to take a pull. Mm. Um, so we're blessed to have the quality of, of, of staff we have and hopefully we can... We can um, we can keep the thing ticking over the way it is. And look, it's a fantastic facility you have here, built from Greenfield. Are, are you happy with where you have it now at the minute? Oh yeah, no, it's here. No builders allowed in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not, um, no. Um, look, it took a while to put together. The, la the land is very good around here, um, so that's, that's very important. And, and, you know, we kind of took out a piece of paper. It was a blank canvas and, and kind of sketched out what we wanted to um, facilities we wanted to have here and we've added a few bits we added those out to our stables you saw um, about a year and a half ago um, but no I think we're pretty much finished I mean we have the advantage of being able to do our day-to-day -day stuff here 
um, and we have a car license so um, it's only 15 minutes down the road we have the best training facilities in, in the country on our doorstep. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.